All I ever wanted to be my entire life was to be an actress and a singer. I remember as a little child, my earliest memories of, I, I think I came out of the womb with a pratfall. I wrote a letter to Walt Disney when I was like six years old. And I said, I know you love Annette Funicello, and I know you love Haley Mills, but you really need to meet me. <laughs> I was a very audacious little girl, and I said, I'm known for my expressions. I was already me then. I was already me. I just had a, um, a lifetime ahead to discover how to express it. I was born in Paris, France, but I grew up in Maryland. My dad had three different jobs. My mom sold eggs door to door, so it's not as if I grew up with privilege, but I was privileged to have parents like I had. I hated it when my mother called me in to do homework, or my father came to find me because I was, I was putting on shows. Years later, as a 12-year-old girl, I walked into a movie theater to see a movie called The Restless Ones. It was the first movie that the uh, Billy Graham organization had put out, and I remember when the movie was over, there was a sort of an altar call. Would anybody like to come forward and give their life to Jesus? And I couldn't get up fast enough. My brother says, whoa, 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 you're not going to. I said, well, then you better take me. You better go with me, because I'm going down there. I'm going down that aisle. It's the greatest decision I ever made in my entire life. I've been working in the entertainment field since I was 10 years old. To be a young woman in that business is brutal because of the rejection, and it's nonstop, and it's boom, boom, boom. I got ripped one time on an audition for Charlie's Angels, and I'm sitting there, and the casting agent goes, well, let me just tell you right now why you're not right for Charlie's Angels. I go, okay. And she goes, we're looking for a pretty girl. And then she said, and a, a this, and a that, and it was like getting beat, beat, you know, just hit him to the left, hit him to the right. As I was walking out the door, I leaned back in, and I went, when you're cast in a cartoon, let me know. And I left laughing. That God made me that way. Spotlights are tough, because some people die under them. I came to life under one. I, I remember I went to a, a school once that I was very, very unhappy in, because I felt like I was trying to be cookie cutter. They were trying to make all of us look alike, sound alike, think alike. And I said, that's the exact opposite of what God wants us to do. God wants us to sing our own song, write our own story, put on our own show. That's the joy of living. I don't, I may admire another person, but I don't want to be that person and miss out on being me. That's the adventure of a lifetime. I've been in the desert as many times as I've been on a mountaintop. But I've learned my deepest lessons from the deserts, for sure. I was married for a short time uh, when I was quite young. It was a huge mistake, tremendously unhappy time in my life. And, and I thought I'd never, ever find joy in, in a marriage. I came to New York. While I was in New York, I met a man named Frank Gifford. After a four-year friendship, we fell in love. And from that 29-year-old marriage, I got the two greatest gifts I've ever known in my whole life, my son Cody and my daughter Cassidy. God took something horrible in my life and wove it into something beyond belief beautiful. Other times I was accused of, of, of ugly things that were not true, that I ran sweatshops for God's sake. All I've ever done in my entire life has been an advocate for children. It was a very dark, dark, dark period for me. But you know what happened from that? God put me to work. So what God did was he said, okay, Kathy, it's unjust what you've been accused of. But why don't you get your eyes off you for a minute and look at the unjust conditions around the world. Maybe you didn't cause it, but people are doing that to other human beings and you need to care about it. We got laws changed because I stayed in the fight with God's help and he gave me everything I needed to fight that fight. My husband was unfaithful to me during a brief time in our marriage, it was devastating to me, but I was able to stay in my marriage and have God heal it. And as a result, I've heard from hundreds of thousands of people since then who got courage from that courage to forgive their husbands or their wives, courage to, to, to keep their families together. Not everybody does, but I've heard from hundreds of thousands of people through the years who did.
on a beautiful Sunday morning, I found my husband passed on to heaven. The look on my husband's face was this. And from that moment on, I had the peace that passes all understanding. He saw Jesus, and Jesus took his breath away. My son then came and helped me try to revive him. He had the same peace. We've all had it since. We've had our sad moments of missing him. But you, you don't find somebody under those circumstances and find yourself rejoicing even as you're holding your, your, your dead, that's what they are, your dead loved one. I was rejoicing. My tears were tears of joy. And I couldn't bear to think about, oh, I lost, woe is me, I'm a widow. No, I'm so grateful that, that, that Frank is exactly where he's supposed to be. My biggest struggle at this point in my life is loneliness. I've lost my parents, my husband is, is gone now, and my children live far away from me. I still live in the same big house where we made a gazillion million memories. And there are times when I am overwhelmed by loneliness. But I've discovered that if I just keep thinking about what I've lost, I don't pay any attention to what I still have. I don't want to live my life in hopelessness. I've been there. That's a town I've been to, hopelessness. I went to some fundraiser years ago, and I felt this tapping on my back. And I turned around, and it was Paul Newman. And he gets down on one knee, and he takes my hand in both of his, and he kisses it. And then he looks up at me with those unbelievable blue eyes. And I went, OK, now I can die. And he sort of had a little trouble getting up, because he was 80 years old at that point. And he goes, Kathy, I'm 80 some years old, and I still have a pulse. And I remember going to sleep that night and saying, you know what, every single day, if I wake up and I have a pulse, I have a purpose. We live in a copycat world. You're supposed to be you, you, you uniquely. That's the first letter of unique, you. And that brings a smile to God's face because he didn't make a mistake with you. Life does beat you down. Loss beats you down. Hardship takes its toll. Illness destroys your body. And Jesus said, it's not going to be easy. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. But rejoice. Take heart. I have overcome the world. And because I have, I will empower you to overcome your world. My joy is non-negotiable. I tell you, that's the beginning of bliss in life. You understand where your joy comes from, and then you protect it with everything in you. I want to be purposeful every day in my life, every moment of it. I'm also getting too old to waste any of it. But all right. <laughs> God is not the enemy of joy. He is the creator of joy. We got a lot to rejoice about. You want to fly. You want to soar. You want to dream big dreams and see them come true. You need to partner with the right person. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. I am Kathy Lee Gifford, and I am second. <laughs>